Alberto Bucci, Alberto Bucci, currently the head coach of the Buckler Bologna team, is one of the most prestigious coaches in Italy. His talk centered on defense and how to attack a zone. Four league championships with Barcelona have established Aito Garcia Reneses as one of the best coaches in Europe. He spoke about playing away from the ball and about how to prepare the defensive transition. Pepe Lasso is one of the coaches who best know how to convey their valuable knowledge of the sport. In Pontevedra, he spoke about working with perimeter players. Clifford Luik, head coach of Real Madrid, the current champions of the Spanish League and Cup, is one of the all-time great Spanish centers. He taught about specific work with big men and the relationship between inside and perimeter play. Chuck Daly, two-time champion of the NBA with Detroit and coach of the Dream Team during the Olympic Games of Barcelona, will give us his ideas on defense building and preparing set and running offenses. On behalf of the Spanish Association of Basketball Coaches, I would like to welcome you to our new collection of videos of the important events that our association puts together. This event, the international clinic that is held in Pontevedra together with the Deporte Galego, has brought five important coaches, Chuck Daly, Aito Garcia Reneses, Alberto Bucci, Pepe Lasso, and Clifford Luik. It is our desire to make this the first of a long series of videotapes for all of you. We would like to finish by thanking the sports office of the Junta of Galicia and the City Hall of Pontevedra for the help that they have given us for this video. It is clear that the objective of this clinic, when we look at the topics that are dealt with, we have tried to create specific individual work on fundamentals. We have talked about the perimeter players and the inside players, the big men. We have wanted to deal with the NBA and see that it is basically the same but with better athletes and some slight rule changes that the young coaches should be aware of. We have wanted to talk about zone offense and defense. We have talked about man-to-man -man defense. And perhaps the most important uh, thing, which I believe is the qualitative leap that we have seen here, is individual fundamentals and individual tactics. Images, uh, pictures never tell a lie, and I believe that with this audiovisual that we have, it will be important for those that were here at the clinic and those that can watch at home. The important thing is to provide this nourishment that they can digest in any way they need, and they will work to, depending on their objectives and the levels of play that they are coaching at. This is important and necessary, and I hope that all of this work done here will be something important for. Uh, considering what is the future and what is the current situation of that Spanish basketball. The idea of this zone defense, this matchup defense, is to create an aggressive mentality in the players, a defense that is offensive rather than passive. In my opinion, zone defense is often seen as a tactic only used by a team that needs to prevent fouls, allowing the other team to do as it wishes and reacting to the rival's initiatives. But on the contrary, this defense can allow your team to be aggressive and to attack the offense, thus developing a good team attitude. What is the advantage of this defense? First of all, we must always have situations of one-on-one -on, -one on the court. And to always have the principal ideas of man-to-man -man defense. One, each defensive player is responsible for one offensive player in that area of the court. This defense mm, provides a great difficulty for those players that are not good at creating when they're playing. Now we're going to look at the two teams, the red and the black team. 
And the others have to remember what the positions are. So take a 1 2 2 zone defense, the red team. And the black offense is 2 1 2. Two one two on offense for the black team. One high post, two low posts, and two guards. Fine, move back, move it all back. La determinazione su questa posizione abbiamo detto che chi va a chiudere è numero uno, cioè la chiave della difesa. Here the key to the defense and the one that determines the defense is number one. This one that's going for the ball. This man can move up to a three. This player, to a three, drops down until he sees an offensive player. This player comes to the middle. This player comes here to help out in front of the post player, the high post player, and this one is sloughing off. Non ci cambia assolutamente niente. Ritorniamo a posto. Let's go back to the initial position. Prendi la palla di là. Tocca il ballo. Pass the ball over here. Vieni qua, qua. Che lui arrivi in palleggio. Vai. E lui va a aggredire. Top. This ball comes here and Posizione. the defensive man comes for him. Fino che non vede. You're going to drop where un until you don't see the defensive man on your side. Same, you're in the line. Okay. Lui determina la posizione iniziale della difesa. He determines the initial position of the defense. He will determine where he chooses to go, how the defense will react. The black team now can get into 1-3-1. One, one. Here it's much easier. Even if he's going to try to fake the player to make him play on the side. In this situation, the adjustment is as you see. This player needs to come here and try to bother the high post until the ball is behind the free throw line. The offense can start with a pass to the side and there's a cut to the basket behind the ball. And they change. You follow him and there's a switch. As you can see in this situation with this defensive change, we always have our players ready and with the smallest player always playing aggressive defense with the, on the man with the ball. Let's do this over. The ball comes up. Okay, get in a 1-3-1, please. Now I'm going to explain an offense and we as a defensive team can see how we will react. There's a cut. Switch and you pick him up. And then go out, pop out to the corner. It's important here for the post to have the position. And this man will come out and help. Let's do it again. Vai in pivot basso di là. 
Stesso lavoro, palla. O sea, mismo trabajo. The same, let's do the same again. The low post. Palla là. Ballon aquí. Taglia. Send Porta. the ball there. There's a cut, a chain, no, no, switch. No, no, no. Porta ele. No, no. He has to go down to the basket and cut across. Let's change, let's change. Defensive switch. This, you're in this position and you open out and this is the switch that we need to see in this situation. This defensive player takes a step forward and you adjust in the back and then we're ready in case the ball goes to the corner. The ball in the corner and this man comes out and notice here this is a tall player and here we have to be careful many times we tell him to take a step back not to risk anything the behavior that I want from my players is the following and this is where their initiative is uh, there has to be an aggressive defense on this player here. Let's suppose that this is a left-handed player. We're going to force him to go in that d direction. We're going to be very aggressive. But also we can make another decision. We need to work with colors, and if we give a certain color, it means that this player can double team down here with his back to the half court. And this way, if the ball goes this way, he can react if it goes to the center. In this situation, this player is, has his back to the half court and the low post defensive play is trying to cut the pass to the low post. This same work can be done in another way. Open up in the corner, pass to the corner. Return the ball and you cut along the baseline. This man, this man can cut to the basket and cause a situation which is dangerous. If in this situation there's an aggressive defense, come towards the ball and there is the possibility if we don't force him to the baseline we can give him difficulty here with aggressive defense and you're on the other side and this, pa this player is covering the players that he has behind him in this situation, in the corner, if we don't have a double team, the side player may decide to pass and then to clear to create situations for this player. So we adjust the defense, and this one has to play very aggressive defense so he cannot uh, reverse the ball on the outside. And this is the new adjustment that we have. He is a two on one. Che problema può sussistere su un lavoro del genere? È la stessa identica cosa. Siamo in condizioni di poter tenere pressione sulla palla, stai sempre aperto. What problem do we have in this situation? There's no problem because we're always able to give aggressive defense to the ball. You want to anticipate here and give the ball to the corner. What problems can there have been here? He can pass the ball all the way out. With this adjustment, with this matchup, all he can do is pass it from side to side and cut along the baseline. 
cambia? There's a switch. And if this man drops, we adjust here, and if there's this cut to the basket, and if the ball goes to the other side, this man jumps out and there's a switch. If there's a mismatch here, the only problem is that there may be a very tall player playing against one of our smaller forwards. And he always needs to front the player because if there's a lob pass, he can get help from the postman behind him. When the ball is there, this front will always allow us to recover from the back, and once again, we're covering the zones with no problem. This, these are the defensive players. Uh, there are many different offenses that can be used against this. One, two, three drops. This adjustment, one goes for the ball, two closes and three drops down to the baseline. And the offense will often do this. They change the ball, and then there's a cut on the baseline. In this situation, we always want to change in this way. You can see the sequence. One, two, three players are shifting over. And number three, then, will be responsible for blocking out this player. Four will always go after the ball. And number two can decide to double team. It's in the same situation we saw before. He can either go for the double team or he can come down and front this player and help out the four man on defense. And then one would fill in for him. Or he can work to prevent the reversal of the ball. Uh, another point, every time the ball comes to the low post, this is five, four, and three, defending here. One comes down to trap, and two fills in. This is always, especially if number five is out playing aggressive defense on the corner, especially if we have forced this player to be aggressive. He doesn't want this player to ever leave his position because this player should turn to recover. If he does so, if he comes back to recover for the trap, he has to turn his back and that is dangerous for moving forward and backward. Offense 1-4. Four. four on the foul line extended. It could be a cut with the ball on this side. And there's a switch. Automatically, the, the uh, defensive adjustment is as we see here. It doesn't matter if the ball is here. There may be a tall player here. This is the defensive matchup. Even though it's a very tall player up here, this player will be bothering the inside pass. What is the difference between attacking um, a zone defense and a man-to-man -man defense? In a defense individual, we move 
against a man-to-man, -man, what we're doing is moving to create some picks that make someone open and to get the ball or for our teammate to get the ball for a jumper or a drive to the basket. And against a zone defense, the most important thing is to move the ball well. And there are some individual fundamentals that are important for a zone. Passing, shooting, driving to the basket, penetration, and the fake in passing. <laughs> Let me tell you an offense that I use against uh, even defense, more than just the movement, but the idea is the principles behind this offense. We always begin the offense with a 1-4, and a 2-3 on defense, a little bit further up, more aggressive, and there always have to be four passes to start with. This pass? Return the ball. Ball to the high post. Whenever this happens in offense, the ball goes to the high post. They react with a cut across the middle. The low post from the opposite side cuts, there's a movement to the side, and the player who is in the guard position will adapt to their center. In this case, it would be on this side. If the ball comes here, and this man comes to help, the first pass could be the cut to the basket. That's our first option. If the defensive man comes to close, that's the first pass. Let's do it again. If this man cuts and he helps, the second option is to look for that corner and he turns to the basket for a pass inside. Let me do the action. I drive, I cut here, I can receive the ball and shoot. When the ball is in the corner, he stops up the middle, and I'm in a position for rebound. The ball is here, and this defensive player fills in, and automatically this player comes to fill in here. This player comes to help after this cut, and automatically we pass to the other corner. The ball out. The same on the other side. One, return the ball, ball to the high post, the high post cuts, there's no change, the first pass, the first pace never changes, it doesn't matter if we do it on one side or the other. Pass to the wing, I'm playing here with a center and a power forward. If number five is in this position, then he cuts and he goes to the middle pivot while this one passes to, takes a step into the area. And this player cuts along the baseline. You're in the middle post. You're at the high post. 
One thing that I want to see, if possible, and it's good when the defense is adjusting, matching up. You are responsible for him, you are responsible for him. They are matching up. Ball to the corner and the, this player has to go to the corner of the free throw line. This one cuts over the top and comes down to the low post asking for the ball. Go back. The first situation is that this player does this action and cuts to the low post, but stop. If this man follows him, he can ask for the ball, look for the position here, and try to block out the man who is behind him, opening his legs wide and blocking out the other defensive player, trying to receive the ball. If he does not help, but he is playing strong defense on his man, then he can get the ball from the corner. Let's return. The important thing here is for this man, when he has the ball and the other player is cutting, he has to be in motion. And if there is a help from his player, he can shoot. He has to create a situation of danger and try to penetrate towards the basket to pull his defensive man. If the defensive man comes out, he can pass in. If the defensive man stays, then I can shoot without opposition. We cannot do this. If we cannot do this, we take a step forward because the defensive player from the other side comes to help the low post. And this can happen in this type of a movement. So this player opens up, and sometimes we can send the ball here, we can rotate the ball. And this player can step up and receive the ball on this rotation. This defensive player comes out, and this player, the big man, cuts along the baseline of the lane, and our center is once again at the mid post. The ball goes to the corner. There's another cut and he goes to the low post. It's the same option we saw on the other side. If the, we're trying to get a triangle between these three positions, here on the strong side, on the ball side, three against two. Ball to the top. Let's go to the initial position. The ball goes to one side, and you cut along the baseline and stop at the weak side post. Most of the time, the defense adjusts or matches up with the small player up front, as we see here. And many times, this player loses any function, any role in this zone. On the weak side, if this man comes down to help, he has to be very open because if this man drops to cover him, there's a two against one on this side. Ball to the top. You stay there. If this man comes out from the middle, our center from the weak side will cut to the middle. And this man can shoot, he can penetrate, he can look in for this pass, or he can kick it out to the other side. 
y en el momento que viene el defensor y, y su compañero el pivot corta, incluso puede girar el balón al lado contrario que se ha quedado solo. Ball en quel lado. Ball to that side. Corta. There's the cut along the baseline. Bye, bye. Es corta. All the way volte, volte. to Noi the corner. Cambiare con la difesa che è in aiuto in posizione, cambiare lato con la palla sul lato opposto. Many times we can change the ball directly from side to side. The principles are always the same. Who should cut after the pass? You have a strong cut. And we follow the same procedure. The player that had the ball cuts to the low post and the center cuts to the mid post. Non cambia se la palla inizia di là. Perché adesso il centro, no? Numero 5, mezzo pivo. It doesn't change if the ball goes to the other side. The high post goes down to the middle post, and something which is very important. Only three players are moving. The wing, the guard, and the power forward. And they are the ones that are constantly cutting. The best passer is here, and he does this movement. He comes from side to side, passing, and he's always looking for the position and passing back and forth. Number five, our center, he is always in the heart of the defense. When the ball moves, he is cutting to the middle post. Cut, please. The ball to the corner and we cut. There is no change. Ball back here. Ball to the other side. Skip pass. There's no change. Give the ball to him. Pass to the middle. And you cut in front of the center. And curl around to the low post. We never change. We do not change the side of the ball until the ball has gone to the weak side. Now is when we cut and change the post players. Let's do it again. Cut. Over. The ball goes to the top. And many times when we do this, the entire defense is going to shift. And he can pass back to the same side. And I'm ready to shoot. If you leave early, we leave an important asset to our offense. It's important for you to be here to commit this part of the defense. If the ball is returned to me, you stay there and he has to come out. You fake like you're leaving and this is important when the ball goes to this side, this defensive man can come up. Ball to that side. Let's see a tough defense. If we see this option, all of the defense leaves. And this man is open. What do you need to do? Cut. And you in the middle, cut to the other side. You're always doing the same. You're cutting along the baseline and you're cutting mid post. What this does is to uh, show us the different options depending on the type of defense. Notice here. 
the possibilities for going to the rebound. We have the ball here on this side. One, two, cut, shoot. One, two, three place players that can always be ready for a rebound. We have the cutter and the two tall men that are creating a defensive triangle. The main idea that I try to convey in my two talks has to do with activity, with movement. Not only should the players with the ball play, but also those teammates that don't have the ball on offense and on defense, we should be very aggressive on defense. Even when our man is not in a threatening position, we can be helping. Following along the lines of the talk we heard yesterday concerning activity of all of the players, I think that theory is much more applicable, or it is clearer, shall we say, on defense. And this is where it is much easier to see that you can never be inactive. You always have to be working for the team. In fast break defense, we saw a bit of this yesterday, but it begins when the shot is taken. The moment that there is a shot, we have to be working for the rebound or for the defensive transition. It's not a shot, and if we don't get the rebound, we begin to do the transition. It's before we are already working on the defensive transition. Either I'm getting the offensive rebound or I'm going back to defense when the ball is in the air. Whenever you're working on anything else, your offensive plays, your type of defense, whenever there's a shot, you have to make the five players work, whether they're going to the rebound or moving back to prevent the fast break. We, whatever the exercise may be, when the shot goes up, we can be working on the defensive transition. Whenever we're working on offense or working on defense or even on the fast break, whenever there is a shot, once the shot is taken, the players have to do something, either take two steps back or go to the rebound, go to the rebound. And the rule that I give for going to the offensive boards depends on the player. I give him a percentage of the number of times he goes for the rebound and the times he goes back for the defensive transition. Four and five, well, it depends, of course, uh, on the type of players that you have. Maybe you have a two that is not very good in defending the fast break, but he's very good on the offensive boards. Well, you give him a 50% of possibilities of going to the offensive boards and only 50% for the defensive transition. But it's usually four and five have 90% for going to the board for the rebound and two 20 percent and one a 10 percent when they are not going to the offensive rebound we have to begin the defensive transition and we say all right we start our offense again we run our offense and every time we're here we go through this for this it's important uh, for example, your assistant coach, when you're working on offense, when you're working on a certain play, a certain offense, it is difficult to be watching for this. So the assistant coach can be working more on reminding the players of these things. You didn't take those few steps backward. It's just remind the player what he's talking about. When we go to the offensive rebound, if we do not get the ball, if we do not get the rebound, we have to all go back to defend as fast as possible. 
el defensor eh, del jugador the que tiene que ha cogido el rebote man that is defending the player that has just rebounded the ball. He's the only one that can stop to slow down the first pass, the outlet pass, or to slow down that player. For example, this player gets the defensive rebound. At that moment, this player runs back down court. These two were already down court, and this player can either return to his basket or stay here to try to pick off the first pass or try to slow down the outlet pass because if these players stay here then we're going to get we're going to give them an easy fast break basket the next point is how to establish the responsibilities in the defensive transition player number one is responsible for stopping the uh, free basket the fast break uh, layup one on zero and they can never score a basket against zero defenders so if I'm the number one player and I'm coming back to play defense and my man is here I stay here to pressure him because we're beginning to do half court pressure there may be another one of those players that runs in the fast break. I cannot stay here. I have to first make sure that there is no long pass so that they can get an uncontested layup. So when can I not worry about cutting out or cutting off this pass or defending this man? when his defensive man is with him and I see that he's going to make it in time, then I can pressure my man wherever we have decided to begin to do it, if it's half court or three quarters court or whatever. Number one is always responsible for preventing the easy layup. There is only one exception, that is when one drives to the basket. When one drives to the basket, it is two that takes on the responsibility of stopping the uncontested layup on the fast break. And so on. If it two is responsible for not getting, not allowing a two on one, when our one has gone down, our two player cannot allow a two on one. When they're getting a two on one, it is the number two player that's going to get in trouble. There can be some exceptions. For example, when two drives to the basket, it is three that takes on his responsibility and prevents the two on one. The same is true with the three against three, excuse me, a three on two, they cannot get us with that advantage of three on two. If they get a three on two, it's the responsibility of the three player, except if the three player is the player that drove to the basket and then four takes on his responsibility, and so on. In the past, we worked a great deal on uh, numerical disadvantages. I remember having learned to play defense, of, uh, defend a three on two by defending, this was the situation, here were our offensive players and we would set up in this fashion and of course this player would stop this when the pass went here this player came out and stopped him and this player came back if the pass came up front this player returned and this player dropped down to the lane again if the pass came here then this player came out well these were the things that I had learned and taught at the beginning of my time as a coach and I think that it's good in concept but it's possible that they can get a three on two but they would have to make the perfect pass and be quick to get an advantage out of it because our three has to be coming down as fast as he can to recover and the team that tries to defend with two players here against three players here for five or six seconds well, I think the team, the difference between football 
and basketball. Of course, the basketball is a shorter court, but everyone plays offense and everyone plays defense. And if there is a moment in which I am caught off guard because I went in for the offensive rebound, this defense has to slow the offense down because one second later, the other defensive players will arrive. And we're trying to stop this man so that when he passes here, I can run over here. All of this can only be done for an instant because when I stop them, I have to have my teammate coming down to defend two against two. The same is true in three on two. One of the things that I do is not always defend in this way, one up front and one in the lane. This is not the way it happens because we're not waiting. Two of us aren't waiting for the fast break to arrive, but rather we are running as well as they. And sometimes I'm here and here and I cannot get in that position, but sometimes I'm here and here and we're defending like this and this one's alone and this one has to fill in. So what we used to do, what we used to practice is only good for an instant now. So the exercise that we saw from Chuck Daly the other day was, I think, the most adequate for not allowing these players to pass eight times and only have one player defending. One of the players, one, two, or three, shoot and the three players go to the fast break and the coach here calls out the name of one, two or three and they do not know then when they shoot who has to come down to play defense and who is going to run and touch the baseline before going down. So if there's a shot, for example, they get the rebound and they run on the fast break if I have called out three, this player runs back, touches the baseline, these two have come down to play defense, and this one is quickly running down so that the advantage of one and two will only be an instant because three is ready to reach the defensive court. One of the things that is important is that this disadvantage can take place for an instant and sometimes they shoot before you get there. Let's not allow that to happen. Until they have scored, we have not finished our defensive transition or until we've recovered the ball. So many times you will see that there are three against two on the fast break and the third is running and he says, ah, they've shot and he stops. They miss, they get the offensive rebound, the three players that are running. Because one of the good thing about the fast break is that normally there is no blocking out. Three comes in, the trailer comes in. So if we're running the fast break. And this player takes this man, this player makes him time to take this man, and this one almost doesn't make it. Three doesn't make it in time. Well, this player will come a little bit later to play defense, and this one that's coming, he says, well, they picked him up, and since he's going to shoot, and it's clear that he's going to take the shot, he just relaxes, but he cannot do that. He has to keep running down to block out the offensive rebound of this man here. Three, two, one. We're playing defense here. You're defending. All right, each one of you defend. When we have a shot, one, two, three. I don't remember your names. If I say three, you run and touch the baseline. If I say two, it's you, and if I say one, it's you. The others go for the defensive rebound, and you run the fast break. Ready? Three. Good, that's exactly it. Now that there was this shot, you were coming down to defense, and you could have said, well, they've shot, I'll stop. No, when you're coming down to play defense, you see that this player is the one that's alone because those two are covering those players. You come here and block him out. Okay, let's change our numbers now. One, two, three, four, and five. One, 
2, 3, 4, and 5. When I say 4, you have to come to touch me before running to defense. You have to touch me and then run to defense. If I call him, they're going to be running 5 against 4. But so they will have to make the adjustments on defense, but once he has touched me, he will be able to come down and recover, and then we can have one man each, but not necessarily our own man. This is a situation that occurs on the court if we're working to stop the fast break. Usually no one goes to the offensive rebound and each one of us is with our own man, but that is not what really happens because on offense there may have been a change. I drove to the basket, my man stayed back. We have to stop those men and you will not be stopping your man, you'll just be stopping the man that gets there first. And what you do is to go and get your man as well. That's not right. You have to come and get the man that's free. That's not covered. So we are going to get good defensive positions to box out. Let's go to 80% of the time you're going to the offensive rebound, 30% of the time, 10% of the time, and once in the whole game. One, two, th were you two, three, four, and five. You ready? One. Uno. Uno. Bien. Good. Entonces, una cosa que que now, one thing that we have to include el, el que dicho uno, is at the moment in which I said one, two, is then responsible solo, for no, no, stopping no, no, no. an uncontested layup. You have to come and stop this man, but many times there are doubts because perhaps one of your teammates has made it first. So what we're going to do is point out the man that you've got. I point to the man, and when you're running down, you know that he's got him, and you don't come to get him, but you go for whoever is open or undefended. I don't want a crazy shot from the offensive team. If there's an advantage, fine, go ahead. If there's not, let's look for the open man. There's no advantage, then let's stop and run the offense. Ready? Four and two. Four and two. Good. Now we have seen, as I explained yesterday, we're not necessarily here for things to work out well every time, but what we want to see is the things that have to be worked on on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, yearly even. Two came to me, his man was there, and the one player was here covering his man when two was completely alone. So you have to defend the two on one and make sure that they don't get an uncontested layup. If this man is not there, then you can defend your man. Good, good, stop. It was good this time. Of course, those of you that are on offense, you have to see who is open. There's a man that's on his own. You cannot uh, drive to the basket as if he were not undefended. We have to keep looking and uh, fill in. The defensive team has to shift and take on the men that are undefended. Four and five. Good. Let's see those offensive players. Are you running? You're five against three and you lost the ball. Four and five.
Good. They get the position on us, however. The offensive team do not get the advantage when they're running five on three. That means that sometimes we're going to the offensive rebound or whatever and we think we're not going to make it so we don't run back to the defense and then they have an advantage. Sometimes to prevent a long pass on the fast break since they may have an advantage in the number of men I'm not sure if my man is going to make it in time, if my teammate. What we want to stop is a long pass. So I can't be defending here when they're running the fast break if it turns out that he's still running and he gets a pass. Well, the first thing I have to do is to run down to the basket. And in the past, it meant to go all the way down into the lane under the basket. But now we have to come down to a distance of a shot. The good players can shoot from here. So we don't have to stop only a layup, but also a shot from this area. So we're going to defend the three-point line. We're above the three-point line. And when he comes down running, we have to close him off. Let's force the drive to the basket. You force the penetration, you fake, and change hands, whatever you need to do to go in. All right, that wouldn't be bad because if he has to drive in this side, then help from any one of the defensive players here is helping and at the same time I'm with my man. So what the offensive player has to do is to go straight or as straight as possible towards the basket. One of the things he has to learn is to defend and to get a uh, offensive foul if you try to penetrate. So here you are going straight and you try to get in right by him. If he closes this off, then you go very close to him. Just rub off of him towards the basket and trying to go to the basket. If it's a foul, it doesn't matter for the purposes of this drill. All right. Now, the position that he had was the uh, position that was too rigid when you're in this situation. Obviously, you are at a great disadvantage because the player that is running, you're stopped, you're in a rigid position, and he'll get by you or you're going to commit a foul. You have to be crouched in a defensive stance, and you have to be very ready to force him to one side, and you have to be able to move back quickly move back quickly to cut off his path, but get very, very low and in a very prepared situation. That's why it's important for you to start up here so that when he's coming, you can already be taking some steps back. But if you begin that here and you move back, I can stop here and pull up for the easy jumper. If I'm waiting for him up front and I move back when he's running, I'm going to have more of a possibility of closing his possibilities. Bueno. Okay, that's good. But of course, the best player for doing this in offense is Jordi Villacampa in the Spanish League. When he comes here, he has some excellent drives to the basket which are very difficult to stop. So the first thing that we have to be aware of is that we're not waiting under the basket because he'll pull up here for a jump shot and two or three points. The important thing is to be at the three-point line and to be in the right stance, defensive stance, ready to react. The first thing we have to do is to find uh, some help for the five player. All right. The defensive position was very good. At the end, you drew a foul, an offensive foul, but that's not what I'm looking for. Why isn't it what I'm looking for? What he did is what we used to do when we were 
playing at another level when they could only score under the basket the center of our team would give him enough time to get to the help after going to the offensive rebound he does not have to try to stop the layup but rather stop him from even driving to the basket if he's running this way and your colleague is here, then you are here helping. If he helps you here, then you know that you have to have this leg back and this leg forward because he's not going to go through here and you're only closing off that last side. So you're saying, I'm going to help you here because he's not coming to offense. Let's go. Good, that was good. The defensive player of a player who's not on the fast break or who runs later should come down to help and to play defense to help this teammate at the three-point line, sometimes the ideal position. And imagine that you're running, you're waiting at the three-point line, and you're running here. You're running late, so it doesn't matter. And now, I'm helping here, I'm helping here. This would be the ideal situation so that he could not drive on this side and he cannot get in on this side and his leg is back and he's going to close off his path to the basket. This would be the ideal situation, but sometimes we don't make it in time. And I remind you of uh, Pepe Lasso's fundamental drill where you're running behind. If you're running behind him, he's going to be afraid to dribble with his right because he's seeing how you're approaching him. So you're much more able to close off his left. We're at the three-point line. We're running this way. Two is coming this way. We have three this way. And we're waiting because we've come down. We have players here, here, and here. So the player with the ball, one, two, or three, is going to try to provoke a one-on-one -on -one to the basket. If I pass to two who's running down, he's going to do this and try to drive to the basket. So we are going to defend, of course, the man that has the ball and try to cut off his path to the basket. And let's not say anything about the other two for the moment. The red team that comes down to play defense, and now let's run, let's run, let's run, let's go. Push it hard, let's go. Good, all right. This is what often happens because of the habits that we have from when we weren't as good as we are now. We force a drive to the basket, a penetration, and you were closing here, and you're trying to get the offensive foul. If you go to the three-point line, the best thing that the guards can do, or players like Villacampa, is to drive and then pass the ball out. You are here. This ball goes out, and we have a three-point shot. What the majority of guards do is to force the penetration, get someone to help, and they pass out, and a three-point shot. So we cannot be caught by this and stand here unless we know that that's a player that's going to drive blindly to the basket and we try to get an offensive foul. We have to draw at least one because if he doesn't give us an offensive foul, then we're giving them three-point shots very easily. So when they're coming down, what we need to do is to fake that we're coming to help, but at the same time to know that they're not going to continue, they're going to pass to my man. And at that second, before he starts to pass, we're going to recover in such a way that I can be on top of my man once he gets the ball. So there's a help fake, and then I recover. If I see that he's driving blindly to the basket, I help, but most of the time I'm recovering with my man. Let's do the same again with the dark team. Let's force the penetration, not necessarily through the middle, it can be someone from the side. Let's go. Let's go fast, fast. We're running hard to the basket. Wow, 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 wow. Well, okay, that's a good drive to the basket, that's a good penetration, but this is what we cannot allow if he's running and he gets by you like this and like this and he's practically going in a straight line. There's no possible help. The help can come when you make him go around 
If he's driving here, you can get help, and it's easy to recover. Good, that was a good drive to the basket. Let's see this again. Okay, running hard, running fast, all the way down, all the way in. Of course, he is not used to playing in the one position, so he forces the drive to the basket. But when you're doing out, the best thing is to kick out the ball for a three-point shot. And this is where I have to correct him and tell him that he cannot be helping and stopping here because every time he passes out, it can be a three-point shot. And remember, let's do this with different players. Let's not just let the one do it. Let's try to make number two force the penetration. This exercise can be done, and you'll see later when we introduce four and five. This can happen in a game situation where sometimes the number one player will pass the ball to his side and he'll stay here. If he stays at half court, then this player will be able to come to help out. But if this player is coming to the area of good shooting, we have to recover. Sometimes they'll stay back, they didn't run down, then of course I can help and the two of us can stop the fast break. While if my man gets close, I have to recover. Okay, we're running in this direction. Let's do it slowly, just as we're going now. Go to the three-point shot line. Stop, everyone, stop. You force the one-on-one -on -one penetration. You can help, but this one is coming too close, so what you need to do is help and recover. What I don't want is for this player to help and the ball is passed out and there's a shot. The same is true as if he is dribbling the ball. Give the ball to this player. You provoke the one-on-one, -on -one, pass here and a three-point shot. Even if you don't do it, this is the problem that we find in the ACB League and the European League. Let's look at this with four and five going to the offensive rebound on every occasion. But, however, the defensive players are only going to uh, give a good outlet pass and not run to the offense. Let's go shoot. Let's block out, let's box out, rebound, pass, fast, let's run. Let's go, you're going, stop. Come back here. When you force this one-on-one, -on -one, this is what usually happens. What's the problem here? What's wrong with this? Doesn't anyone see it? We said it before. What's this man doing here? Nothing. His man is all the way over there. He has to move up here next to his teammate saying, I'm helping you here. And then he can move this foot forward and he can cut off this entry to the basket. Quickly, quickly. Good, very good. Perfect. 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 Perfect for both, and very good, very good. You all have done a good job. We have two men defending the ball, and the man who is defending here comes in in case his man gets through, and that's a three-point shot from the corner. This is what I don't want. I don't want this help. If you help here, you have to do it before they pass to your man. When you think your man is going to be passed through, after the help, you're recovering. He gets the ball, and you're on top of him. Perfect. Okay, let's do it again. Quickly, quickly. All right, good, good. When you're seeing that you can get past your man, you go and shoot the layup. 
This is basic fundamentals of offense. But if you see that you can't get by because your man is two meters in front of you, well, if you're good at this, like Jordi Villacampi, instead of going in there and waiting for the guard to do all the work, you can stop here and wait for the ball. It means you're running, not at 100% speed, just at 50%, you get the ball, and from here, you are the player doing the one-on-one. -on -one. When the four player, let's say he's running the fast break, and the four is coming as a trailer, or the five, and you are here playing defense. When we're here, we cannot be blinded by this. We have to be aware of when the trailer is coming. When my man comes, I am going to get him, but we've stopped them. They're no longer running, and it's not as necessary for there to be two men to stop the man with the ball. Okay. All of this is when they're running the fast break, but many times it is not fast break, but rather they're running down to set their offense. And in the majority of the cases, we don't know if they're going to have a set offense or if they're trying to get the transition or the fast break. And this is where we have our toughest job. Well, for some teams, it is very difficult to stop the fast break when the other team is very specialist in that. But generally speaking, about all the rivals that we play against, sometimes they run the fast break, sometimes they s go to the transition, sometimes they run very quickly to their set offense, and sometimes they go slowly to their set offense. Our defense cannot be the same on every occasion. If they come up slowly, we don't wait for them at the three-point line. We get them from the point where we decide to play defense. If we decide to do three-quarters defense, three-quarters court or half-court defense, let's say that we start at half-court, we have to be defending at that half-court. So first, the first responsibility of the number one player is to prevent the uncontested layup, the one on no one. He comes down to play defense and he prevents a one on zero. If we see that they're not in on the fast break and our two has come down and our three has come down and our four is arriving and our five is here, well, we don't stay there, but rather we move up to our defense. So we move up and we're going to take them from half court. We're going to press. We're going to press them from all these positions. When it is clear that they don't run the fast break, we don't go to the basket, but rather we wait for them at half court. The four and five players that used to go to play defense under the basket, it's not a matter of going to the three-point line, but if the offensive guard is here, let me draw this over. If the offensive guard is here dribbling the ball, the five player has taken out, four received the first pass and gave it to the guard, two is here, three is here, and we've come down to play defense, and we're there with plenty of time. The player covering number one will pick him up at half court. That's where we usually start playing defense. The player covering two is not waiting at the three-point line. That's only when there could be a long pass on the fast break. But when they're in this position, bringing up the ball slowly, I don't allow this ball to reach my man easily. I'm defending in this position. The same is true with player number three. And for four and five, we're not here resting for our four and five to arrive. But rather, we work to stop the man that has the ball and is dribbling down the court. I come here to help to stop this, and we can do a trap, a two-on-one at half court. Because if we want to play defense at half court, and we've got five defensive players, and they've got three on offense, then we can do that. So this is truly difficult to 
convey this, this philosophy and this way of playing to the players. And I've been trying to do it for many years, and with some players I've been able to do it. I remember that waiters and David Wood were able to come up and provoke the situation as centers, as fours and fives. And with Savic and Norris, we have been able to achieve what I explained before, that is to stop the fast break of the Acampa with Norris helping out and Steyer defending or stopping Jofresa's drive to the basket and helping Montero on defense. Up, up, stop here, stop. Here, bring the ball back here. The five men were here and they've still got two in the backcourt. There's no more fast break. We're here, up here, playing defense. And the other one is waiting there. Let's do it again. Stop him, stop him. All right, good, you've seen what I mean. When they finally learn to do a double team at half court, they realize that a player can come later. When the player arrives later, they leave the double team and go back to their positional defense. Let's do it one more time. Get in the passing lane, in the passing lane. Wait. Okay, one moment here. Right here. When this player has the ball here, and you're in line with a three-point shot, some of you spoke well and told him to pick him up at half court. That's good. However, there was no longer danger for a fast break. They were relaxed. They were going to do their four, their five play. But you shouldn't be down there waiting. You should be working up here. Obviously, you're not going to be working here because you'll get a back door. But don't make that pass an easy one. Don't be all the way back here. Be around here so that he will be afraid to give that pass, and then that effectiveness of the two-on-one will be superior. I think that's enough. The main concept of my conferences are to make fundamentals, the fundamentals that are used by the players when they are in the game, to be as similar as possible to the best players in the world, without having to start with the ABCs, because if so, they would come late to learning about these advanced fundamentals. I think that the young people, the players today, are much better than what we usually consider them to be. I think that most of the time the defect is on the part of the coaches that don't have too much to say to them. The player is a very intelligent individual that uh, gets bored when we don't provide him with uh, some interesting aspects. He uh, practices worse or he feels fooled uh, and then he becomes passive. I am... I defend the players because I believe in them. Whenever there's something to tell them, I don't care if they're young, I don't care if they're old, a uh, player is always willing. The Spanish league scores less and it maintains the same percentage and it loses the same number of balls, it has the same number of turnovers. This means that with a collective strategy, uh, which is what we're looking for, it is the idea of cooperation, when there is no individual capacity, we turn to the group philosophy and what we have done by grouping together this uh, group, we are able to maintain a high level of competition. However, to score less points, we need the same shots that they needed two or three years ago, and they continue to have the same number of turnovers. Only uh, the person that coaches can be in the ACB. If he's not in the ACB, he's at lower levels, he's at the junior level, the juvenile level. Uh, there's an important ACB coach among us, and he's coaching a, deaf, a team of deaf children. Why? Because he likes his profession so much that he coaches coaches a team of deaf children because it's something that enriches his work because what our what we have is a vocation 
he does not copy the exercises. We copy the concept of the coach, of what he wants to do. This activity that he is concerned about that worries him, well, leads him to, for example, have a team that doesn't have any of the best rebounders, but for it to be the best rebounding team. Why is that? Because he demanded that they move, that they be in constant movement. If they're girls that you're coaching, you want them to have a, an advantage when they're running. And the same exercises then cannot be applied. We have the same concept for other. I would like to divide my work into five sections, and I'll explain to you why. We begin with dribbling and progression. Uh, dribbling and progression is the movement that a player makes. It doesn't have to be a guard. Uh, this is something I do with all my players. The movement that goes from the moment in which they get the rebound until they reach the other basket. This shifting of the ball from one side to the other is not only for guards, it is aimed at any player that in the center of the court or underneath his basket can find the ball and not know what to do with it. This is the first section, the first area that we're going to be working on. And of these players, I'm going to talk to them about passing in four or five different ways, but never give a chess pass. There are two types of dribbles. First of all, the protection dribble and the open court dribble. But there's an evolution. I think that when you go from one end of the court to the other, it's a risk, and we have to reduce that risk as much as possible. The way of reducing this is to take the ball and have it as controlled as possible with our vision so that when there are obstacles, we can get rid of them. The ball then always has to be out front. This is the first premise. But before coming out dribbling, we have to prevent the first, we have to avoid the first uh, obstacle. Many times the guards get the ball and their back is to the other court. Let's take a look. Stop. When this man gets the rebound from a pass or because the ball has come into his hands in any position on the court, we're doing it right here now, but it could be anywhere. He doesn't know if there's an obstacle behind him. Since he usually has it, he has to be always prepared to pass ahead of that obstacle. Okay, let's get the ball, and you stop because I'm in front of you. He stops and he stands up, and he signals number four, four on the side, or six. No, that is down there. Here. I want you to pass me. This player has to get rid of me. He has to get around me. The ball then has the obligation of going ahead of him. Someone out here to hinder him? Okay, get past him. There you go. Once again, quickly. Ball on the backboard goes to the side. Let's move, Iñaki. Once again. Here we go. That's not bad. Now, all players that receive the ball and have the open court ahead of them should never stop because there is an obstacle, that there is another player in front of them. The old guards and some modern guards, when there's just the minimum difficulty by a, uh, another player, they want to have them right in front. The player should fight to get his defender behind him, and he should try to do it as soon as possible and get past him as soon as possible and then protect himself. We're going to look at exercises then so that the players will not have this problem. Let me tell you about my exercise. The exercise is for him not to run too fast. He wants to keep his man behind him and the man on the back should not pass him but he should take the ball away. Keep, keep going. but he takes the ball away. What for? So that the player that is going down the court should not be able to adjust his view, the height of the ball, the trajectory. He should not be able to adapt anything of the trajectory. He cannot adapt any part of his circuit. Let's go back again, please. Nothing of what he's doing can be adjusted. He can adjust it only to one thing, the man that is behind him and always on his back, never in front of him. We don't want a player that has a, uh, an advantage and loses it. On the contrary, we, want, we have people like Michael Jordan that look behind them to know where you're coming at them. But the problem in front is not a problem. He doesn't need to look at the ball. He doesn't need to know the height of the ball. 
he doesn't adjust his stride to the dribble. Iñaki off the, ba off the backboard, and then you come up behind him trying to take the ball away, but without passing him slowly, slowly, slowly. You try to get the ball from him, take it from him, take it from him, come back and do the same thing, Iñaki. Go slowly, go more slowly, more movement, try to get the ball away from him, that's right. Once again, stop. What's your name? Javier. Okay, Javier, take the ball from him. Go slowly. Take it from him, Javier. Take the ball from him, Javier. Once again, Iñaki. Javier. What's your last name, Javier? Gomez. Lopez. Javier Lopez. Would you take the ball from him, please? Okay. Iñaki, don't go as fast. Continue. That's right, continue. The second... Okay, defend yourself, but don't run. Alberto, take the ball from him. Good, good. Once again. Stop for a moment. He needs too many dribbles. He doesn't use his legs enough, and he uses the ball too much. A dribble can produce more plays. It's more creative. A dribble should give you more. And here it's not giving him very much. They, many players cross the court. A dribble and two strides, a dribble and two strides. This is if a drummer played the drum and the cymbal at the same time. No one would hire him. That's, that's the way it is, isn't that right, Moncho? You have to separate your hands from your feet. These have to separate their hands from their feet, from their vision, from their head. Everything has to be separate. Let's go, John. Okay, Iñaki, I want you to use your vision. I want you to look. And what about the colleagues? What about your teammates? Let's go, guys. You had someone under the basket asking you for the ball. Pass it to your teammates. Keep moving forward, that's right, and looking forward, you don't have to worry about the one behind you. The players produce, they create with their vision. If you look back, it's a movement of the defensive player. Please, don't, don't pay any attention to Iñaki, he's very silly. I'll tell you how bad he is when he goes to the dressing room. The vision, the... The si your sight creates a lot. Someone that is looking and has to turn back, that is a moment where the defensive player can move his body, and that's sufficient. The head must, must be used in dribbling. It's clear, then, how we can cross the court. We're going to do it now with someone that doesn't know as much and how we can get a person to reach this level. Start dribbling. Let's go. Dribble. Stop. Stop and come back running, please. Run back here. Never, never do one of these. Do whatever you want, but never do normal strides. Do whatever except for two normal strides. Okay, where's the ball? Out front? Good. All right. Too many strides. Do it again. Do it again. Throw it off the backboard and do it again. Okay, jump on the same leg. Good. Come back. Too many dribbles, too many dribbles. Once again, let's go, Javier. There you go. Well, that's not bad. They're getting the feel for it. Iñaki, do the same, and I want you to bruise around your back, dribble behind your back, move the ball between your legs, go back, more things, I want to see more things, and slower, don't run so fast, I want you to produce more, that head, keep your head up, you're not supposed to be looking at the ground. Again, Iñaki, the ball, the head looking up, you're looking at the floor, Iñaki, you can't do that. The player moves forward, and from this point on, whenever we talk about dribbling, the legs and the body are always uh, parts that are involved. They can never be his, his enemies. In order for them to be his complements, you have to know how to use them.
the ball has to be away from the hands and the legs. If we're using the ball inside, close to the body, in this position, if we have the ball close, then it's very difficult to produce, to create basketball. With the ball here, the body itself becomes an enemy. With the ball out here, the body becomes an aid. It becomes a complement. There's only one possibility when the body is here, and that's dribbling between your legs. Another guard. Give me another guard, please. Javier. Where's Alberto? Okay, I want you to go down the court, slowly. The ball away from your body. Stop. Okay, someone, can, who can tell me what went wrong? What did he do wrong? There were seven dribbles. The enemy has to be attacked. You cannot allow the enemy to stand in front of you. You cannot allow him to be in front of you, and that philosophy in this is the most important part of this drill. When we eliminate them and get them on our backs, all the better. It is much easier, and the tendency of players, especially as years go by, is to keep the defensive player in front of them, because with the man in front of them, I know, I know what I can do. With the man behind me, I have to invent things, and as I get to the other basket, it gets more complicated, because then there's a line, and the line is as far as we can get, and when we get past that line, there are the defensive players, the centers, and the guard, the more veteran he is, says, no, I'm going to stay here and my defensive player in front of me, and then I call the play 4, 3, 1, whatever. So, getting into theory, then, don't keep the ball close to the body. The dribble should be at different heights. The lateral movement without crossing your legs, and you should work with little jumps. And to finish with this, we're doing the same exercise, Alberto, if you could get behind Iñaki. Now you're not going to take the ball from him. You're going to be behind him until the offensive area, and then you take as long as you want, and then you pass him the ball so he can finish with a layup. Let's do it the other way. You dribble the ball. You dribble the ball, Iñaki, Iñaki you work behind him. <laughs> Again, let's repeat it. All right, let's change it. Turn it around and we're going to see how Iñaki produces in a different way. Do a good job. You take the ball where you want to take it. Let's go. You're not treating him very well. You have to score. Take the time you need, but you have to score. Later, there's another exercise, and you'll see it. The player has to use the ball. He has to play the ball, and Iñaki, play without the ball, please. He has to give opportunities to his teammates, wherever you want. Very good. Once again, the same ones. Iñaki changes his rhythm. He's waiting for his teammate to be ready to pass him the ball. He gives him a back door. Back door, Iñaki. There you go. Alberto, is that his name? Alberto does not have a measurement. A passer doesn't get into the zone. He stops with the two hands. He doesn't have a measurement. He doesn't know how to do it. Continue playing, Albert. Stop. He doesn't have a good position on the court because if he's waiting for his teammate and he goes to a corner, he's limiting the possibilities. Stay, take the position of a typical center whenever you want now. Go wherever you want. Not bad. If they are not able to have a feeling of what the philosophy of 
the offenses without defensive players, how they're going to be able to do it against defensive players. The man that was behind was the one that was leading, and now we're going to do it the other way. I want you to take the ball, Iñaki, and lead. Good. Once again, let's enrich this a little bit. Let's improve on it. Looking ahead of you, Iñaki, looking ahead of you, head up. Go behind him. It's hard for Alberto to get the philosophy of the game, and then he makes it more complicated for his teammate. But what we're trying to do is get the timing when the player crosses the court. There are moments in which uh, we're lacking a player to pass to. Sometimes we coaches talk about it. If he had waited just a little longer, the number four player was on his way. But what happened? He gets there, he looks, and he gives it to the two, and then the four was just about ready to arrive. Why we have to wait sometimes, we have to continue handling, and we have to wait for the right moment for the explosion of one of our teammates. We have to do what Aito said before, to look to create. The player is leading before the player that, was, that had the ball was leading, and now it's the player that wants to get the ball is going to lead. Good. Once again, Iñaki. Good, very good. All right, let's give him a defensive player. A defensive player on the player with the ball. Stay behind him to take the ball away with him, but don't pass him. And you're his teammate. You do whatever you want. Very good. Let's repeat it again. Iñaki, tell him where you want him to go. Tell him where you want him to score. You're behind. I give him a defensive player so he will not be working without problems, but he has to keep his defensive player behind him. Good. That was very good. I give the ball handler someone that will make his job more difficult. And I make sure they keep up a uh, timing, the correct timing. It becomes more and more necessary to have set plays, and we're going to talk about how to handle dip dribbling in the set plays in 5-on-5, five 4-on-4. Five, four four. We know how to cross the court, but it is my opinion that the dribble is always an offensive action, never a defensive action. When a player has to turn his back to the offense, when a player has to turn his back okay, to attack, I think it's fine. Let's come back again. Okay, play with your back and go the other way. Mm, that was not good. Repeat this. This is a secret. Only he and I knows it because he's very bad. No, that was bad. That was bad because he loses his advantage with the dribbling. He's if he's in this position and to turn, he uses his right hand, he loses his advantage. He loses his advantage, totally. This man is not defending himself from the pressure, but rather he is attacking. He's looking for his offensive spot. That's right, with the same hand. So whether you're facing or whether your back is to the basket, it doesn't mean you're defending yourself. Let's get a defensive man here. Attack him, offense. Good, once again, get up. You all right? Change, let's get someone else. Okay, back to the basket. I don't want you to get the idea that when your back is turned to the basket, you are defending yourself. When you're defending yourself, it's when your back is to the basket and you're not attacking. Defensive player, please. Okay. 
face him. He's afraid of losing the ball, so he turns his back to the player, to the defensive. This is a player that is defending himself. He's not attacking. He's not creating an offensive opportunity. Now, attack, that's it. That is an attack. That's an offensive move. Now, pressure him. Okay. Face him and first get him moving. Put pressure on him. Let's go back again. Come back again. Face him. Take him wherever you want. Always facing him. There you are. So, without wanting to say that having your back to the basket is not good, what I do want to say is the player that has his back to the basket loses at least 30% of the vision of offense, and therefore he is not attacking. He is defending himself, and if he's defending himself, he's not a good offensive player. However, if he's turning his back to the basket for his own intentions because he wants to create some opportunities, he wants to create advantages situations, and that's fine, but not just to defend himself. Okay, take him somewhere. Use, take him wherever you want. Work on him. Work on him. He was not uh, totally turned. Kukoc uses his back to attack. Float off of him. Slack off. There you are. This player is attacking because he turned his back to the defensive player to take him where he wants to take him, but not because he was afraid of losing the ball. Let's go back to the offensive play. I was saying if you turn your back to the basket on offense to defend yourself, it's not good. For a player to be a good dribbler on offense, he has to be able to move from side to side. We have four players here in the corner. I want four players. Let's go quickly. One ball each player. Okay, look at the basket. Let's do. Uh, let's move along the three point line without crossing our legs. Shuffling. Go slowly and come back on the inside. But don't stop. Go slowly. I want some active work. That's nice. The same defect once again. It's a yo-yo. The body and the ball are like a yo-yo. This player is not producing. He's not creating. Let's go, Iñaki. The ball is part of of the play and his body is another part. If stop if the player step out, step off the court and just I need two, any two players. Any two players. Okay, repeat that again please. All right, the coach is here to work. And to work means to teach, and to teach is to make them change. Let's try to make some changes here. Don't adjust the dribble to your body. Your body is one thing and the ball is another. Do you understand what I mean? Just dribble and move. You're jumping with your dribbles. Do the same with less dribbles. Don't jump on each dribble. There you are, your legs further apart. Good, that's not bad. Come back with four dribbles. One, two, three, four, and five. Get over there. How do you say one, two, three, four in Gallego? Let's go with four dribbles. Two, three, four. Okay, not bad, Yanakis, not bad. Let's see another. Again. Okay, who can tell me what was done wrong? He played laterally. He played laterally the whole time. And for what will develop later, he does not attack this way. He attacks this way. Because if he has a defensive player here, he said sorry, and he takes it from him. That's better, that's better, that's better. Now with the other hand, Iñaki, a man from Oklahoma. Another player. 
Why is it so important? Well, because when the player can play laterally, he chooses the space where he wants to get by his defensive player. Every player that plays two on two well can do this. At the same moment at which a player crosses his body, he's lost the other 50. Here, stop here. Here he can choose his offense. Here, this player has lost 50%. All the harm he's going to do is on this side, or he has to change and face me, because in this position, there's only one offense, and that is to attack the right. But whenever he's facing me up, when he's looking at me straight up, he can do whatever he wants. There's only one possibility. Everything has to be along the left. So while the player does not dominate, does not control that capacity for movement, he does not dominate or control all of his possibilities. Because when he crosses his leg, it means he's made a decision. I want to comment one thing. Stop. Stop. Iñaki does one thing very well, and that is to dribble away from his body. Nyaki is not afraid of the presence of the other player, of his man, because every time the defensive player tries to get to the ball, it, he is totally off balance. There's no balance. He, it's the same exercise we were doing on a full court. He passes the ball. Touch me if you want, but he's got the ball up front. Repeat that again. Play defense on him. On the side, covering him well. What happens? Well, the angle that he has for movement is so wide because I've made him work with his legs spread and the ball far from him. Whenever someone tries to go to that trajectory, the person has to really move. The defender has to move, and he can quickly just turn, pivot. If he had the ball here, or if his movement was a very closed one, when the defensive player came here, there would be no solution. He would have to defend himself and start moving back. He never backs up. Give him some tough defense. Even if you foul, make a foul. Go for him. Go after him. Repeat it again. Force him, even if you commit a foul. Force him. It's n he's not a good dribbler and I'll talk to you later about his defects, but he does have one clear idea. He has learned that he doesn't need to turn his back to the basket. If he puts the sweep far away, then it's a temptation for the defensive player, and he has enough time and room to turn around. Do the same with only your right hand. Another player, please. Only with your right hand. Once again, foul him, foul him. If you have to, foul him. Face him, Iñaki. Face him with your right, Iñaki. He doesn't gain the advantage here because he does not handle it the same way. He has to protect himself and therefore he moves the ball back. He backs up. Do it again with your right. Look, stop. On the left, his body is always facing, facing the basket. He's not afraid. But on the right side, this is his position. And of course, the defensive player has less to defend. What I make them do is to go around the complete circumference, always looking at the basket, changing at the, at the axis the ball so that they can learn to back up. You're looking straight at the basket. Don't cross your legs. Only if you change positions, as if you were playing defense, and go all the way around. Change your hand. Back up. Back up. But always looking at the basket. 